take a look at the inside of the head of the Tormach mill here, looking at the manual drawbar setup. I'm getting ready to replace the manual drawbar with a power drawbar. Picked that up a couple of months ago, but I haven't gotten around to installing it yet. Sitting here on the bench still, along with the insulation stuff here and all the other hardware that's laying around. I got some work to do before I can get in here. Uh, the power drawbar insulation uh, takes apart the uh, the motor section a little bit. The top of the z-axis opens up the cabinet, changes some electrical stuff, uh, moves some wiring around, adds some pneumatic lines, etc. Uh, hook in an air compressor. So it definitely is a involved project. The mill itself is all clean. I got the uh, table cleaned out. Looking nice and shiny. Haven't seen it this clean in a while. So now that I've done that, I'm ready to start tearing into the mill. The power drawbar insulation is complete at this point. I have a uh, test cycle it several times. Uh, no problems. I do have to sort of neaten up the insulation here still. It's not the way it's going to be when I'm satisfied with it. You see I've been adjusting the uh, drawbar tension. I'll demonstrate that here in a second. I did have one snafu at the end. I tried to start the spindle and it wouldn't start running. Couldn't figure out why. It turns out my uh, door adjustment was out just enough that this extra stuff on the inside and the new position of everything uh, meant that the spindle wouldn't start when I attempted to. So I adjusted the switch on the pedestal or whatever you want to call that, the bracket there, and everything's fine now. So no problems. Other than that, just been adjusting it to be sure that it's the travel is right. When I first did it, travel was pretty large. Well, that's naturally a little bit more than it would normally go with a collet in there. But that's the, uh, that's the function. Definitely a hand saver, that's for sure. So, adjustment. The fork, that's the old drawbar locking fork there. Basically, I just position the uh, flat so I can get the drawbar fork on it. Now the drawbar can't spin. And I take my old uh, drawbar wrench, pull this lever down the way, and I can get to it well enough here. No, loops. Interesting. Have to tighten that up. Anyway, um, I can adjust this as necessary. And that changes the tension as you as you uh, tighten the drawbar like you normally would. The stack of springs compresses, and that causes the uh, collet to draw farther up into the head, just like you would normally tighten the drawbar. Uh, and that delays the uh, contact because you're increasing the gap between the uh, the bottom of the air spring or air cylinder here uh, to that. Delay. So it delays the interaction a little bit between the two and it uh, minimizes the travel. One thing that's worth mentioning about this setup is that the power draw bar itself is powered separately. I have the uh, transformer plugged into the wall right here. I'm not a big fan of things that consume power when I'm not using them, so what I'll probably end up doing is either plugging it into the underside if there's an accessory plug on the machine controller uh, or control panel on the on the underside. I haven't even checked to see if it reaches yet. Pretty sure it does. We'll see how that goes. Um, that way when I shut off the main power to the cabinet it gets shut off automatically or I'll install a, a, a power strip, plug this into it and have a switch on it so I, could, I don't have to uh, plug it in and take it out over and over again. One thing I did do while I was inside here since it was such a pain to get the uh, the wire from the um, uh, the brains down to the control panel box. Anticipating that there would be some additional wiring when the ATC went in place or when it wasn't installed, I figured I'd put some other wires in there. In fact, let me show you my exceptionally classy way of 
setting this up. Let me shut off the power here. The, uh, I've got the wires ready to go for the next time. So I've got two wires so I can pull twice on this, either direction, uh, but that gives me an opportunity to not have to fiddle with it again. What you're looking at right here is the power drawbar insulation. You'll notice that there's no belt on the uh, spindle pulley. I have removed it for the purposes of this test. One of the things that has been in discussion on the CNC zone forum at least has been the interlock between the Tormach power drawbar and the spindle motor. If you add an automated tool changer ATC to the middle, you see I don't have one here, the uh, there's an interlock that goes between the power drawbar control and the VFD down there. That interlock is supposed to prevent the power drawbar from actuating while the um, spindle is turning. As long as there's no spindle signal, the uh, power drawbar can operate properly. Like right now, I got the foot pedal. But as long as there's a spindle signal, it is supposed to not uh, drop out. In other words, the VFD tells the power drawbar, don't operate now. So I've removed the belt so I can run the spindle without turning it. I can run the motor without turning the spindle, I should say, and test my system to see how that works. So I've got the spindle uh, in manual mode right now. Spindle's running at 4,000 RPM or so, or the motor's spinning at 4,000 RPM, but of course the spindle itself is not turning. Bell being right there. I have the foot pedal, and let's see what happens when you step on the power drawbar. So you can hear the motor spooling down. The brake doesn't actuate. The brake that normally stops the motor from turning uh, doesn't actuate when you do this. See, I'm still staying on the pedal. I don't know what value that has other than to keep the power drawbar extended. So the fix, which I haven't tried yet, is apparently to put basically what amounts to a uh, old phone cable from the VFD interconnect uh, outlet on this in this power drawbar control module down to the VFD. VFD itself doesn't have a connection. You have to connect the, doesn't have a phone cord style connection, which would be RJ11, I believe. Uh, but it does have ports for you to connect the wires to, which is what I'll be doing next. The next thing I'm going to try is the spindle door test. Again, I have the spindle on manual, uh, set to 4000 RPM. I'll start it. Still no belt. The spindle is not turning just the motor. Let's see what happens when I open the door. And the power came on just like before and it's spinning down. So same functionality basically, whether you open the door or step on the power drawbar. And now finally the test I'll do, the motor's running at 4000 RPM, spindle is uh, stopped and the belt is still disconnected. I'll test the uh, manual button here. Down. So here it is, the phone cord. I went scrounging through my box of cables looking for a phone cord. Much to my surprise there wasn't a single one in there. Apparently I've purged them previously thinking, what the hell do I need to plug a phone in for? Well, went to the store, got one for three bucks. This one's seven feet long. I looked at the uh, the scheme of the pairs on the inside just to be sure it was the right one so I can wire everything up correctly. There's the Tormach power drawbar insulation document uh, revision A. I guess that's 812A. This is the picture of the inside of the power drawbar control box and it's not marked but this is the terminal we want to use here. So if you look at the automated tool changer or automatic tool changer document, you'll see that 
that is highlighted as the VFD interlock or something like that. It's VFD interface. I don't remember the term they use exactly, but that is the that's the one we're going to plug it into. All right, so I plugged it in for demonstration purposes here. Can't tell if I'm pointing at the right thing or not, but the white wire uh, is in the correct port. There's the orientation of everything. All right, I've pulled the uh, phone cord cable, the RG11 cable, through the column now. Found it a little bit easier to get through once I took the plug off the end. I was having trouble getting it down. Now the next step is to wire it up to the VFD. So I got the cover off the VFD, one screw right there for this version of the VFD. So I have the phone wire opened up here. The, these wires are the same, uh, same color pattern as the Tormach wires. You can see that if you look in their ATC manual, uh, you can just make out, see the red and black wires, which are the ones that I'm going to use, but you can also make out the yellow and green wires in there. Um, uh, in the picture in the ATC manual. Anyway, we don't need the yellow and the uh, green, just need the red and the black. And I'll strip those. Those will get installed in the T1 position, which is right here, and then the B3 position, which is underneath here. Alright, the black and red wires are in. The black wire is connected to T1, which is right here. It's uh, wrapped around this wire and plugged in. And then the red wire is in its own spot here in B3. And that should do it. Now I just have to close up the wiring and uh, finish up the task and test it here. The wiring is complete at this point. The only indication that this wire is even in there is uh, where it comes out of the column and into the wire routing material there. All right, everything's reconnected back the way it was. Uh, compressed air is going to the manifold and mill is off, but since the power draw bar is powered separately, that's this wire going down here. I haven't finished that installation yet. Uh, the power draw works like it should. So here we go. All right, the mill is powered up. I'm going to start the spindle. Uh, go to 2000. I guess I'm not starting the spindle, I'm starting the motor. Again, the belt is off still. So the motor is running, but the spindle is not turning. And we'll test the whether the drawbar, the power drawbar works. I'll use the foot pedal first. So, sorry, the power drawbar interlock works. Nothing there. Alright, I guess I have the confidence in pressing this button. And nothing's working there. So it looks like that did the trick. Now, do one more test whether or not the mill still shuts off with the door opening. And it does. Alright, so I'm actually going to need two hands for this test. The intent of this test is to see if the mill uh, will, sorry, if the power draw bar will act actuate once the mill comes to a stop if I'm pressing the button. So I'll start it manually. I'll run it at, so you can hear, 2,000 RPM. It's spinning now. Pressing the power draw bar and I'll hit stop. There we go. Power draw bar installation is complete. Air compressor is installed. 
with a tap and a uh, moisture filter. The power draw bar power supply and the air compressor both are running through the power tap. It's mounted to the back by magnet so it's movable. The uh, air supply also can be pretty easily set up for a for an air drop to go down to the inside of the um, inside of the enclosure. Foot pedal is here. I guess I haven't put the uh, cool manifold back up yet, but everything else is in place, including the functionality of the power draw bar. As soon as I hook up the uh, switch on the air supply, of course. There we go.